welcome to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers. Focusing on God's Word illuminates the Word of God by explaining the Scriptures and conducting word studies using Scripture to support Scripture in the revelation of His Word. Matthew eleven fifteen said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. As he ministered to us today, here now is Pastor Everton Jeffers. Pleasant good morning once again, and it is indeed my pleasure to be with you this morning. And I am going to be speaking to you this morning on the subject, the spiritual athlete. It's very important for us to recognize that as Christians, we are in a race, and it is important for us to know exactly what is expected of us as an athlete. The Christian life is a race. And if we are going to win, there are a number of things we are going to have to do. And I'm going to itemize them for you as we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 23 to the end. If we're going to run this race properly, we must know the race we are in. We must know the rules for the race. We need to know the one committee member who makes up the committee. We must exercise. It is also important that we lose weight. You, you ever see a fat athlete? Obviously, no. If you're going to see a fat athlete, he must be throwing javelin or something like that. But if you look at most athletes, they're fit and trim. What we're going to lose is not the muscles. We must lose the fat and put on muscles in the process. And we also need to know why we run. That is very important. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verses 24 to 27, this is what it says. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? And they run their very best. Why they run? They're running to win. But only one received the prize. Run your race in such a way that you may seize the price and make it yours. Now, every athlete who goes into training and compete in the game is disciplined and exercise self-control in all things. We need to understand as Christians that if we're going to run this race and run it successfully, we need to know also why we run. Now listen to what 1 Corinthians chapter 9 says. They do it to win a crown that withers. So we see here the world runs so that they can win a crown. And that crown withers. And that is back in those days. But we do it to receive an imperishable crown that cannot wither. Therefore, we do not run without a definite goal, but we run with a goal in mind. And so we know from the very onset that as Christians, we are in a race. In running that race, there are a number of things that we're going to have to do. And those things, if we don't do them, they can have an impact on our success or failure. In running this Christian race and so let's look at what first Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8 has to say about this race that we're running in it says physical exercise profit little but godly exercise it's profitable unto all things which means that when you physically exercise yes you you lose weight you burn fat, etc. But spiritual exercise help both in the physical and spiritual aspect of the Christian lives. And so let's look at what this is actually saying. But godliness is profitable unto all things. And let's look at the aspect in which Timothy looks at godliness or the godly exercise or spiritual exercise, if you want to use that term. 
one spiritual exercise help the health of the body, the welfare of the soul. It has to do with this present life because how we live now determines where we spend our future and it also determines the final outcome of that person's life. And so when we look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, we recognize that the spiritual aspect or spiritual exercise or that spiritual apne does not just run to receive an earthly crown, but he runs to receive an eternal crown. He runs so that he can affect both this life and the life to come because he recognized that godliness is health to the body, it is welfare to the soul, it has impact on the life, on things in this life and also in the life to come. Now let's look at two aspects of what 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8 says. Having promise of the life that now is. And what this is referring to, it is speaking to the continuance of it, of the length of days of living in earth or on earth and enjoying all the necessary temporary good things, the mercies of life. For God has promised to his spiritual worshipers, to them that fear him and walk uprightly, their days shall be prolonged, they shall want no good thing, nor will he withhold any from them that is for their good, that is proper, and that is convenient for them. So we see that when God deals with us as his children, as spiritual athletes, God deals with us for this life, which means he takes care of us, lengthen our lives, make sure that we, um, Paul says, I wish above all things that we will prosper and be in good health. Those are physical aspects. But then let's look at the spiritual aspect, the spiritual exercise, what does it produce? And of that which is to come, it produces eternal life. That eternal life is received or procured hereby, for it is the free gift of God, and it is not by any works of men, for otherwise it would not be of a promise. For it is being promised, showed it to be of grace. There is nothing more or less in it than this, that God promised glory to his own grace for internal godliness, which animates and maintains spiritual worship is of God and is of his grace. So let's move on and see what we're looking at as spiritual at least. Now every athlete goes into training and competes in the game. Two things that we must remember. The godly athlete must maintain discipline and he also must exercise self-control. What are those? It's important for us to know what they are. He must be disciplined and there are two specific areas of the gospel that we need to know. One, the spiritual athlete must be very disciplined when it comes to prayers. The children of God must pray constantly and the Bible says that men are always to pray and not to faint, which simply means that we are walking, we are praying, we are sitting, we are praying. Before we go to bed, we pray. When we get up in the morning, we pray. Because what we need to understand that in order for us to actually know what God wants us to do, we must be in tune with God. We have to understand that for direction for our everyday living, we should go to God and that's where our direction should come from. What's number two? Number two is this, the reading of the word of God. When we talk about discipline and self-control, we must make sure that we are so disciplined that there is no day in our lives that comes that we don't pray and we don't study the word of God. 
The only how we're going to know how to run successfully is to follow the dictate of the Bible. That's why the Bible says in Timothy, study to show thyself a proven to God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The only how you will know what God wants you to do, the only how you would know how God wants you to run is through prayer, speaking to God, or the studying of his word. The only how you can rightly divide the word of truth is by reading it and understanding what it's actually saying. And so if we're going to be successful in this race, we must know what it takes to do it. Self-control and discipline. There are two key areas that we must exercise discipline and control in. And those two key areas that I've just mentioned will determine whether we become overweight or be the right size to successfully run the race. He says, let us run. Now the question is, what type of race? It is important for you to know the type of race that you are going to be in. And so the first thing that I want to make clear, abundantly clear this morning is this. God determines what type of race we run, whether it's short or long distance. And let me explain that for those of you who don't understand what that is. God is the one who has each and every person's life in his hand. He determines how long we live, uh, how short it is before he calls us home. It is not up to us. And so the time that is given to us is determined by God. But whatever race we are running, whether it is short or long, we must be disciplined when it comes to prayer and the studying of God's word and the obedience. That's the discipline and the obedience in doing them. What are some of the things that we're going to meet on the journey? Because it is important for us to understand in this race, for those, even though it's sometimes a short race, sometimes there are obstacles on the journey. There are obstacles on the journey. And so these are things that we need to understand. And if we don't understand this, then running the race, when we meet these obstacles, there's a tendency to give up in this race. Christians don't give up. Let me repeat that. In this race, Christians don't give up because they have the extra help from the Holy Spirit to drive them on. But let's continue. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, it, it makes a powerful statement there, which I want to share this morning. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, I want you to recognize this. In this race that we're running, the race has personal witnesses, persons that are watching us as we run. Some of us in this race, and, and, and I want to make this clear because a lot of times I don't think people or Christians recognize that in this race other Christians are watching them and also unbelievers are watching us. How we live can affect those persons who are running with us and also those people in the world who are watching us. Our lives, the way we run this race can determine whether we draw people to Christ or send people further away from Christ. And so we have to be very careful how we run. Now, the witnesses that Paul spoke about here in uh, Hebrews chapter 12 are those witnesses that he mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. But we need to understand also that we have witnesses here on earth watching us run in this race and those young believers, if we mess up, we could create problems for them. So we need to make sure that we run this race and run it right. 
And those sinners in the world are watching us. And some of them, they're basically watching for us to make a misstep. For them to say, look at those Christians. Thank God that God provides the privilege and opportunity that if we run and fall, that we can get up and run again and still win. Amen. It says, let us lay aside every weight. If we are going to win, and I want to make this clear, this is not a case of all of us running and one person win. No, that, that's not what this Bible is talking about. The Bible is talking about running so we can complete the race. All of us are in this Christian race. And all of us that starts this race must run to finish it, to complete the race. All of us at the end of the day will receive our reward. All of us will be crowned, but we must run as if we're running to win. And that is important for me to note. It says, let us lay aside every weight. If we're going to win, we have to lose the weight. Now, what is the weight? The physical man, what he does is that he goes to the gym he lifts weight, he works on his abs, works on his thighs, work on his upper, work on his lowers, and you, you know the whole thing about um, what they do as athlete. How does the Christian lose weight? And it is important for us to know this. The Christian lose weight as he continues to put off those old things that he is accustomed of doing, lying, Cheating, jealousy, slander, gossip, sexual immorality, stealing, uh, causing division, lack of love, unforgiveness. The Bible is saying that if we are going to run this race successfully, Every day of our lives, we should be shedding these weights. We should stop lying, stop cheat, stop committing um, sexual sin, stop being jealous of each other, stop causing division, be forgiven. And so as we each day drop these things off or take them off or allow the Spirit of God to remove them from us, we become lighter and as God allowed different difficulties and hardship to come into our lives, that is where we develop what is called spiritual muscles. Just as the athlete, the natural athlete, wants to develop muscles, the Christian also must strive to develop spiritual muscles so that he can continue to run. Now, what spiritual muscles? Let me, let me say this. A lot of times we hear people testify. A testimony, and I've said this before, is a test, if you notice, test I money. What it simply means, it's a test that God has put I, notice the I comes in the middle. It's a test that God has placed me through, and at the end, I receive the reward. What's the reward from going through a spiritual test? The reward is at the end of it, we become more faithful to God. Nothing moves us that easy as God takes us from one test to the next. We become closer to him. We become stronger in our faith. And we run with more stamina because what God is doing by his test is to allow us to prove to ourselves whether we are in the race for what it offers or we are in the race simply to follow God to the end. And so when it says, let us lay aside every way, it is talking about the sins that we commit. It is talking about getting rid of them every day. It is talking about putting them aside. Hey, you know what? Even today, as Christians, we still make mistakes, we still sin, but God is saying to us that every day in this race, it should be a putting off and a putting on. Now, what do we put on? If we are going to run this race successfully, 
if those things we need to put off, then what are the things that we need to put on? And Ephesians chapter 4 um, gives us a rundown. And what I, 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 I am looking at is what Ephesians chapter 4 wants us to put on and to put off. But let me just narrow it down to some degree and let us look at what it is talking about. One of the things that the Bible says that we should owe no one, it says we must owe no one love. Don't owe anybody anything. One thing we must owe them, just simply love. And the Bible clearly states that the Bible itself, the commandments, it's wrapped up in two things. Love thy neighbor as thyself and love the Lord thy God. So it simply means that if we as spiritual athletes are really and truly going to develop, then we must put on the bowels of love. We must remember Galatians uh, chapter 5, which speaks of the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, kindness, meekness, temperance, patience, and self-control. These are the things that cause us to develop spiritual muscles. And so we have to remember that when we are putting off, we can't just put off. We have to put off, and while we're putting off, we put on. In putting off and putting on, the more time we spend with God, the more we become like Him. Our habits and our lifestyle changes. We no longer live a self-centered life, but one that is focused on others with a pure and a sincere heart. Now, Hebrews went on to say, and the sin which so easily beset us. So he says, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight. So I just mentioned the weight. And then he went on to say, which is very strange, but I can explain what it is. And the sin which is so, which so easily ensnares us, that sin is that habit that we have. That sin that seems to take a hold of us each time, we, we, we sometimes think that we get over it, and then at times it comes back and catches us. Paul is saying, or the writer to the Hebrews, because some people dispute whether it's Paul who wrote Hebrews or not. So let's say the writer of the Hebrews is saying, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. Let us get rid of it. Let us strip it as a dirty clothes. You know, nobody bathed and then go and put back on the dirty clothes. Obviously not. So if we have bathed, if we took a shower, we're not going to go back and put on the dirty clothes. And this is what Paul is saying. We took a bath when Jesus came into our lives. We should not go back to the dirty clothes that we have taken off. But we should be putting on clean clothes every day. Listen, and this is what is pertinent to this whole message, to this whole race. He says, and let us run with endurance. So what, what, what happened? You ever notice a person who is overweight and they're running? Have you ever noticed how they struggle? That person will not be able to run with any stamina. After a short time, they're going to stop. And so, the writer of Hebrews is saying that in this race, he says, let us run with endurance. How do we run? With patience and stamina. And we must never give up. Even though we fall, we must not get up, get up, give up. We must get up and start running again. And that's why he says, let us run with endurance. There are times we're going to feel tired, but we should never give up. There are times when you're going to feel discouraged in this race, but we should never give up. There are times when we're going to feel as if the world is against us. But let me say this to you. If the world is against us, what matters most is that if the world they're against us. Always remember this. God is always with us. I also want to make this clear this morning. 
this race has a one-man committee it's, it's one of the mo it's, it's 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 different than any other race you can think about because in this race jesus is the only committee member and there are no other he determines what type of race and what you must do in the race and this is important for all of us to know this race is set before us and and this is important for us to note this too the race is not behind us what we have already covered we need to leave it behind we have already covered that notice what he says the race is set before us we have to know where the race is once we are alive the race is always going to be before us the race only stop when we die the race is set before us and so we must always be looking forward forward still is jehovah's will it does not matter how many grounds we have covered the end of the race is always before us you know why people fall aside and detour and sometimes become obese because they look back from whence they came they stop and some people remember, you know, when I was in the world, I used to go down to the bar with my friends and I used to, let me tell you something, spiritually, if you do that, you're putting on weight. You don't need to put on weight. You need to lose it. And so that is one of the things that we need to remember. Now, there are a number of things that we need to know about this race. One, <laughs> we don't set the distance. The one man committee does. He set the distance. We do not set the rules. He set the rules. He tells us how to run. He tells us what to do. He determines how long. In this race, you can fall down many times and not be disqualified. You, you know, I like this race. I, I, I like this because, you see, for me, you run in this worldly race and you fall down a couple of times, you're disqualified. This race, you can fall down a few times, several times, and still complete the race. Praise the name of the Lord. This is just so important for us to recognize. Now in Psalm 37, 23, very important for us to note, this is what it says, the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord who takes the light in his journey though he falls he will not be overwhelmed for the Lord is holding his hands you know this is a very powerful point because this tells me that in this Christian race I can make mistakes and still not disqualified because guess what once you start this race once you truly, truly start this race, you're going to end it. You are going to end this race. Even if you fall several times, the Bible says that the Lord will pick you up. Now, let's look at something else that is very, very important. In this race, we have to remember that most times it's a distance journey. And in the ordinary races, if somebody falls, you don't look for them. You continue to run because you know without a shadow of a doubt that there is only one winner in that race. In this race, when a brother or sister falls, we are our brother's keeper. That's the difference about the spiritual race and the physical one. We take care of each other on this journey. There are obstacles in this race. There are people that we call friends in this race. In this distance race, there are so many things that you will encounter when we're running this distance race. And that's the reason why it is important to lose weight. Because I'm gonna tell you, in this race, you have obstacles called people. There are people who set in their ways, and all they do is to make sure that they set trap to bring you down. 
if you are losing weight spiritually, they will not be able to trap you. They might cause you to fall once or twice, but after a while you will know them and you will be able to fly over them, run past them, or go around them because you now know that this particular person means no good. Also, in this Christian ways, there are times when your bodies will be attacked. Sometimes it seems as if you're not going to make it. But always remember, in this race, we have the best physiotherapist there is in the entire world. Because he is the one who makes the human body. And so he knows more than any doctor there is. And so all we need to do, there are times when we might have to pull off so that the physio can do some stitching up and some banding up and some spraying up. But let me say this to you, you can continue the race right after he is finished. I want to tell somebody this morning that this race is the best race that you can ever run. Because listen to me, in Isaiah chapter 40, a very important passage of scripture, he says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You, you notice this? They shall run and not be weary. And don't care how far the distance is, they will walk and not faint. You know why we can run this race and not, weary, not be weary and walk and not faint? Because we don't depend on physical water. We depend on the Spirit of God to take us from one distance to the next. And one thing I can assure you as a child of God, he says, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you, not even until the end of this age. And so we need to understand in this race, not like the other races, you get help and your source of help is the best source of help there is because the spirit of God strengthens the believer in his race and this is why he says he will never give us more than we can bear. That's the fact. Every situation, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, this is what it says. There is no temptation except such as is common to man. But with the temptation, God will provide a way of escape. So in this race, this race is not for us to give up. Yes, sometimes we take a breather, but it is not for us to stop. I also want to say this this morning, that there are too many overweight Christians. Pastor, what do you, you mean by overweight Christians? Overweight because we're still living our lives as if we're in the world. It is important for us to understand that there is a necessity to be different. The Bible says that we are living epistles read by all men. Well, let, let, let me ask the question. Let me ask the question this, this, this morning. Let me just ask the question this morning. Are you sure that you're in this race or not? Are you, are you sure that you're running the Christian race? There's some of us that call ourselves Christians. And there's no difference between us and the man in the world. I want to say this to you this morning. That should not be you. If you're in this Christian race, you should see a difference. You should be slimmer, trimmer, and looking more like Christ the best athlete there is in the world. If you are obese, if you are still carrying unforgiveness, and I'm happy on unforgiveness because a lot of us as Christians, we have people that we are carrying around. We are in church, we cause nothing but division. We are jealous of people, giftings. We do stuff that should not happen. We hold malice and we, we slander and speak evil of one another, 
Those are the things that are keeping us back from going faster than we are. God is saying, lay them aside. Put them aside. You can go faster. You're only being slowed down because you're not exercising. You're not disciplining yourself. You're not practicing self-control. And I also need to let you know this. That I've often noticed that those persons that you see are engaging in those things of the flesh. Notice what happened. Most times, they seem to be the one that had the most talk. But you know what? This Christian race is not about talk. It's about living. It's about the way we live. It's about what we do. It's about the action that we take. It's how we act during crisis time. Listen, there are times, and I have a, a sister who runs the New York Marathons on a number of occasions. And I'm sure when she watches this, she's going to smile. And she would say to me, after you finish 20 miles, you're running on guts, nothing else. 20 miles, you're almost out of anything else. And that's why you see that at times they have to do, they have to do certain things before they, are, they run that race. The Christian race is similar to a marathon. But guess what happened? The whole of this race must be run resting on God. This race cannot be run by ourselves. We cannot run it in our human self. Because what it calls for us to do is to run something that is almost impossible for the natural human to do. You want me to explain that? Because some of you say, well, how, how, how is that going to be? Let me explain that to you. The natural human, if a human being does him something, the natural ability is to try and get even. And if somebody slapped you on one cheek, the natural thing would be, hey, he hit me first, hit him back, yeah? The Bible also says that, listen, people that hate us, we must love them, yeah? Naturally, do we do these things? That also is a part of the Christian race. And so we need to understand that if we're going to live this Christian life, we have to allow God or Jesus to live the life through us. He's the one that is going to help us. He's the one who empowers us to live the life we are supposed to. And there are too many of us that are trying to live it and fail, trying to run it and fail. As a matter of fact, some of us, are like the children of Israel. In this race, God said to them, listen, from Egypt to Canaan, and as soon as anything comes up, they want to go back to Egypt. Let me say this. Who starts a race and then starts the race and want to go back at the starting point? Come on, give me a break. Don't we run? And the, the, the whole issue is to look to go to the finishing line and actually to get there first? Which one of us run a race and looking back to the starting point? None of us. And that's why in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. What we need to understand, don't look back to Egypt where we came from. Egypt is a type of the world. Egypt is a type of what we used to do in the world. Hebrews is telling us that now that we have left Egypt, what we need to do is to look forward because at the end of this race is Jesus. And he is the author and finisher of our faith. So we must look forward to the ending of our faith. And so we have to know without a shadow of a doubt that when we start this race, we must be sincere, we must know what we're getting into, and we must know that once we start it, there is no turning back. I'm here to encourage somebody this morning to let one of you know that, listen, you're in a race, and there are times when it is very difficult, 
You don't even know sometimes what is going to happen next. I remember David in Psalm 121. He says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And so is this I want to leave with you this morning. This is my encouraging word to you. Don't stop running. The distance might be long, but what is at the end of this race is out of this world. We are running this race not to receive an earthly crown, but to receive a heavenly one. And not only that, but to be with our author and finisher at the end of this race for the rest of eternity. I pray that God will bless your heart this morning. I pray that that man, that woman who might be concentrating on, should I continue to run this race? My encouragement to you this morning is to continue to run because at the end of this race, I can guarantee you, according to Romans chapter eight, it would have been worth it. Paul says, I guarantee you the present situation is not worthy to be compared to what is going to be revealed or the glory that is going to be revealed at the end. And so my encouragement again, don't give up. God bless you and have a wonderful morning. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers, a Bible-based study revealing the Word of God. You can follow Pastor Jeffers on God's First Radio at 102.9 FM from 1 p.m. each Sunday or on Abundant Life Radio at 103.9 FM. You can also follow him on Facebook or the YouTube channel. Thank you once again for listening to Focusing on God's Word. May God continue to bless you.